we knew they were very explosive on offense. They've been very explosive on offense for for a while now, ever since Coach New's been there, they've rolled up. And then to me, like I've said, they were they were better on defense a year ago and they had a ton of guys back. So they they I know they anticipated being a lot better on defense. Um and then we we knew going in it wasn't normal offseason. We talked all the time about how choppy these games are, these college games I've been watching on TV. There's there's been a lot of highs and lows for every team, and they haven't been always aesthetically that that beautiful. So we try to prepare our kids for, hey, the game could be choppy. We didn't know how choppy it was going to be. Um, early didn't get much going on offense. Uh, their offense made some huge plays. The Hall kid we know and the Huntley kid and the Plitt kid are just great, great Mac players. Um, made some plays. We didn't feel like we executed very good, but, but we also know how good they are. Um, then we lose Brett. Davian Johnson's our third tailback. He's having a really nice evening running and catching, and then we lose him. You know, so I, like I said last night, I gave my great halftime speech. We're down 14 to 10, and then they come out and they roar down the field and make it 21 to 10. So I probably got to change my halftime speech. Um, and then, uh, you know, you got your backup quarterback in, you're down to your fourth team tailback, and you're playing a really good team. And, you know, then Offense kicked into gear, scored three straight touchdowns. Defense got some stops for us. Looked like we got the game a little bit in control at 31-21, but then in Mac fashion, uh, Ball State roars back and scores. They get a stop. We get a stop. The kid makes a 47, 48-yard field goal, huge kick. Uh, uh, for their young kicker, makes a huge kick. Uh, I thought I was, I was thinking we were in good shape when we got that stop, but you know, and then McWood makes a huge play at the end and, and we got a short field and, and Khan punches it in and you win a game. So like I told the kids, it was very similar last year where we played a lot of close games and, and somebody made a play at the end to win it. It was kind of role reversals last year is typically the defense holding, holding down the fort. And then the offense would find a way to make a play uh, when we needed it the most. This, this week was just the opposite that the offense kind of kept us in it and got us back in it and got us a lead. And then when we need it the most, the defense, you know, wasn't happy. They'd given up 31 points, but McWood makes a huge play. That's the difference in the game. So last year we felt like any low scoring game, we were going to win. It was nice to win a high scoring game. We haven't been in a shootout here in a while. Um, probably the last one was two years ago at Buffalo 51 42. Um, so we haven't won a high scoring game like that. It was nice to win a high scoring game. It was nice that the defense stepped up the end to get it. So great first victory went through a lot against a really good team and found a way to come out ahead. Coach, you, you talked about you're down 21-10. You've got a bunch of injuries piling up in the game. Is there something, like, you're probably the most competitive person I've ever met. Like, is there, in a way, you're almost kind of like, all right, this is, like, right where I, we got, where, where I want them, almost like where you're just the, the, the underdog factor? Yeah, I, I, I don't know about 21-10. At 14-10, I, I felt a little fortunate because we had, we had some really, really bad plays that caused losing in the first half. You know, we fumble, we put a nice drive together, you fumble on the four. I mean, you can't do that if you want to beat a good team, all right? We give up two chunk plays. Um, the second one was really bad, um, really out of position from the start. Not, I don't know, just it was bad. A good play by them, but bad play by us. But somehow you're only down 14 to 10. And I'm like, I told the guys that we didn't play our best football and you're, we probably should be down a little bit more, but we're kind of sitting right where, let's go play our best football. And then, then they jump on us again. It's Huntley makes a big play and, I'm like, yeah, maybe this isn't where we want to be. But our kids, again, you're not going to win every close game like we talk about. But when you have success in them, I think we've won eight or nine in a row now, less than a touchdown. Kids believe you can do it. You know, and early when we were here, we couldn't win them because our kids didn't down the stretch. Our kids didn't believe we were going to win them. We, 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 we lost. We were we were losers. They knew we were losers. And like they anticipated losing. Now our kids anticipate winning. So even though it was choppy and even though Ball State made their share of plays and we made our share of plays coming down those, those, those last moments, our kids still believe they're going to win the game. So that, that, that is a huge factor. I don't know if it's right where we want to be down 21 to 10, but we're not, we came from behind a bunch last year. So our kids don't think it's over. If that would have been three years, four years ago, Huntley makes that great run to start the second half. You probably put a fork in the Red Hawks, you know, just, they would have been like, here we go again. You know, we're going to find a way to where now it's like, okay, we can still do this guys. And they've, they've, they've proven it in themselves. They can, and that confidence from having success in those situations gives your team a lot of confidence. 
Coach, talk about your injuries a little bit and let us know uh, where we stand with Brett and Davion and anybody else. Yes, yeah, really just uh, those two. And then Kobe Hilton are the three from the game. Um, really too early to tell. We got, they got appointments today set up to see the extent of where they are, where they're at with their injuries. Um, again, we, we really don't know. I know they're not practicing today, but we don't know. I, I think we we get them the doctors, we get some pictures of what's going on and know that they're, they're definitely not ruled out yet, but they're, they're definitely, they're definitely not cleared either. So they're, it, it'll, it'll depends on what the doctor and the, whatever, whatever images are taken today of their various ailments and looking at the severity. And then we'll, we'll get a, we'll get a pic, picture tonight from the trainers of, okay, no way we're going to make it by next Tuesday or, Hey, you know, 50, 50 or whatever, and then a plan for rehab. And again, so it's nothing, they're not season ending injuries or anything of that nature at this point. And where hopefully we get good news that they're not as bad as, as, as they could be and that we can rehab them getting ready to go. Very good. Um, let's talk about your special teams. We, we talked about them last night on Hawk Talk, but, uh, you know, you, you, you tried a few freshman, freshman kickers out there and, uh, they, they, they look pretty good for that first year. Yes. They did a really nice job and obviously place kicker back. It goes five for five at extra points and, and, and makes his field goal, uh, which, which was awesome. Um, did did a really nice job. Our young snappers did a really nice job all day. Then obviously the punting. Dom did a great job punting punting the football. And then you add in our coverage units were really good. We didn't probably kick off as well as we think we can, you know, as far as distance and height. But our kickoff coverage unit was fantastic. Uh, like we talked last night, the willingness of our starters, the willingness of our best players to want to be on special teams and want to play every snap and not beg off and not, not think they're too good for ST really makes a big difference and really sets a the tone. Then obviously coach here got all the young specialists ready um, for their first game. So it was, I would say better than I would have hoped for their first game, to be honest with you. Coach, what can you tell us about Buffalo? Uh, overall, they're just really good. They're, you know, I mean, they were hustle belt, which follows us pretty good and does a really good job, actually knows our teams and knows what their makeup are, you know, ranked them the number one team in our league last year. At the end of the year, after we had won the championship, Buffalo was their their top club. Um, and for good reason, they're really talented. They're, they're, they're the biggest, strongest, probably most athletic defense in our league. They're very well coached. They play north and south. They really rush the passer. Uh, you know, the combination of having a great pass rush and being stingy against the run sets them up for a lot of successful situations. Um, they do a great job of stopping the run and force you in the third and long. And then they got, you know, got kids that can really get after the quarterback. And it, it, it caused a lot of problems, just like last week, you know, three defensive scores is pretty unheard of. But I don't not that they anticipate doing that every week, but they 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 create big plays on defense. Then offensively, you know, they have a similar mindset to us. They want to run the ball and, and throw play actions off it and take their shots deep, um, use their double moves. Um, but with Patterson and Marks, you talk behind, you know, as good, if not the best O-line in the league, but as good an O-line as you're going to see in the MAC and experienced O-line. And then you got these two tailbacks that could play anywhere in the country. They're, they're really tremendous. So they run the ball tremendously well play great defense. And, and, and ever since Van Trees took over at quarterback, they, they pretty much been rolling, you know, and I know he wasn't the starter. He came in in our game a year ago, but after our game, they, they really were really efficient throwing the football and really do a good job with their, with their vertical passing game and taking their shots down the field. I asked you this last night, how much do you take from this game against ball state with their running game and, you know, passing game and, and be able to handle the likes of Jared Patterson and Marks and the rest of the offensive crew for Buffalo. Yeah, we're going to have to, we're going to have to do a better job against a run, you know, and ball state ran the ball fairly effectively on us. Uh, and obviously Huntley, when we, we got, let him out there was huge and he made it, made us pay like he makes everybody pay. And, and they've got two guys they did a year ago. Patterson had a 90 yarder that we actually defended halfway well. That was the, the frustrating thing and shows how good Patterson is. He, he broke three tackles on a 90 yard touchdown run, which you got to give credit to the kid. Like he made the play and it was three of our best players and they were trying. So it's not, and, and that happens. But when you play great players, you, you better be razor sharp with your eyes. You better be razor sharp with your run keys. And if you let those guys get on the back end they're they can run by you, they can run through you. So 
Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tall challenge. No one's really stopped their rushing attack, um, you know, in the last few years and really stuffed their run. So you got to try to manage it. You got to try to get them, you know, to some, some third longs. They do a great job of staying ahead of the sticks, but you got to create some situations where you do get them in the third long and, and then do a good job of getting off the field. Because if you don't get off the field um, on third down against these guys, they're going to go right back to humping the ball down your throat. So um, it's, it's, a, it's a huge challenge. I think if you, the consensus is everybody thinks they're the best team in the league this year. Um, and, and we, know, we know what we're up against. What kind of challenges does it present? Obviously, given the time that we're in, we really don't know. But knowing the COVID restrictions and travel and everything else, uh, preparing for that kind of road trip uh, with a seven-hour bus ride up there, what kind of uh, challenges have you been looking for? Yeah, no, and it's always a little bit because, you know, for us, this is this is the longest trip. I mean, Northern and Central are also pretty good hauls for us, but this, this adds just that little extra time. Um, you know, you can fly, you can bus it. You know, the, the, the recovery piece of bussing um, hopefully allows you to sleep on the way back better than the plane flight. The plane flight's quicker, but by the time you get to the airport and fly and then get to the airport in Dayton or Cincinnati and drive, it's a planes, trains, and automobiles to get home. And it's very choppy. We did some, we got with some medical people in the off season that, that suggested that on these six or seven hour Mac trips, you'd be better off getting, getting some buses. So we actually are trying some sleeper buses for the first time, um, which hopefully will allow our kids to, cause it's hard to sleep on a bus, but if, if they can get and lay down, they think for recovery, it would be significantly better. So we're kind of trusting the medical experts, which um, not talking about COVID here. There's been a lot of talk about that when it comes to COVID, we're just talking about re recovery. Um, so we're, we're going to give it a whirl. So, um, but obviously this is a challenging trip. It's, it's, it's hard to win at Buffalo be number one, cause they got a really good football team and they're really well coached. Uh, number two, it's just a hard trip in general. And then you add COVID in and all the restrictions. We've got a good hotel that's been already, you know, dealing with NFL teams have already been there with, so they have a really good plan. So I think from that standpoint, we're going to be fine, but the busing is definitely an issue. Hey coach, uh, congrats on the win, uh, first of all, but uh, we're working on something here in our office for next week for Veterans Day. I think I remember you have uh, relatives, family uh, that was that were in the military. Just wanted your thoughts on Veterans Day and what it means to you. Um, yeah, it, it means a lot and we probably should have Veterans Day about 10 times a year so it stays more on our brain, you know what I mean, because we all get busy and forget, but my, my dad's an Army, Army vet and uh, like we love sports in this country. I particularly love sports. I love playing. I love coaching. And, you know, that's just one of our freedoms. We have, we have all our other freedoms that, you know, at times me, like everyone else takes for granted, you know, how, how great our lives are. Cause we all get bogged down in our own days and we all have our own reasons to be unhappy with our job because of whatever reason in particular with COVID it's making it harder on all of us. But just what the military has always done and what this country is made of is comes from the military. Like every, every major part of history, it was the military that, that got something done for America and people sacrificed their lives and people still sacrifice their lives and still sacrifice their, their, their livelihood. And, and even if they haven't been killed in combat, people spend their whole lives as military people protecting our rights, you know, and so we can do this, we can have a press conference on a, on a Friday, which we think is a Tuesday, so we can go play a football game. So it, it is awesome. And then just for me and my upbringing, and, and my dad was done with the military by the time he, we weren't a military family, he was already done. Uh, but a lot of if not all of how I was raised was I got a mom from Bronx, New York, and I got a dad that's an army vet. So um, people that think I have a certain approach to life that I come by it, honestly, it was, trust me, I'm not sure I was born this way, but in, in my house and in, in how my dad approached things and how hard you were supposed to compete, you know, and a lot of it has to do with probably how he was, but a lot of it has to do with his military background. And, you know, whenever I complained as a kid, he, he immediately let me know how great I had it, you know, and, and I do that a lot for our kids on our team and even our coaches, like we can all find the things in our days that aren't great, but you can, 
you can say whatever you want. You know, our life is pretty good because of what these people have done and continue to do for us. So it, it is it is awesome. And like I said, I wish we celebrated it more often and kept it more more in the spotlight that we all think about it because I think we're all appreciative, but I don't think the military people know how appreciative we are. So it's awesome that the Mac is doing this. Thank you.